Hello everyone and welcome to today's session, Tableau. This is a business intelligence and data visualization tool. Thank you for spending some time with us today. We'll move on to our contents. Uh, today we are going to cover the introduction like what is business intelligence and what is Tableau. We will also see why we are selecting Tableau with other available tools in the market and how is it helpful in the business intelligence. We will understand the fundamentals in the field, like how is data collected, how is it stored, where is it stored, and the backend process. I will sh also show a short live practice on Tableau. And lastly, we will discuss on the career paths and opportunities. Moving on to our introduction to the topic, what is business intelligence? Business intelligence is a data analysis process where the business advisors and the organizations gain insights on their data for the further improvement on their downfall areas. It is an end-to-end -end process from converting your raw data into actionable and informative output. So you will be gaining something from your data, which is like unstructured, and you will be structuring your data and see the analysis behind it. And you'll get to know what is what at the back end of your data. Business intelligence combines business analytics business uh, uh, data mining, data visualization, data tools and infrastructure. And we will also show the best practices, practices to help organizations to make more data-driven decisions. What is Tableau? Tableau comes under the data visualization uh, team and it is a visual analytics platform. It helps people see, understand their data and make decisions out of it. It is an easy drag and drop tool into the data and it has a very user friendly interface. Even if you're from a non-technical background, this tool makes your dashboards easier to understand and your data with interactive and dynamic visuals. This is the most powerful, secure, like I work in the HR analytics and I know how the data comes under compliance issues and this Tableau is most secure in that process. This is an end-to-end -end analytics platform for your data. This is so easy to use if you are presenting large and granular data sets, like if you have millions and trillions of rows of data, this is the most effective than any other reporting tools and spreadsheets out of there. Compared to your Excel and Access or the PDF files, this one is easily presentable to the advisors and the decisions coming out of it are like easy to understand and easy to understand your data. Tableau provides multiple options to connect to different type of data sources available out in the uh, out in the platform here. This Tableau is found in 2003, and in 2019, Salesforce acquired Tableau for like 15.7 million dollars. Now Tableau goes under Salesforce, like Salesforce is the parent company for the Tableau now. We'll move to our overview on the topic, like why Tableau for business intelligence. And like, how is it useful for our business intelligence? Why are we selecting Tableau when we have all other tools? Tableau is a leader in the Gartner analysis. This is a database leader. It came out of like so many times in the first in the Gartner analysis magic quadrant. It has a wide variety of options to data sources and databases, whether it if the data is on your cloud or in your premises on your system, it is like easy to connect to the data sources. It will automatically refresh your information from web apps and cloud databases and support live queries of your data. This provides real-time up-to-date connections to your data sources. It, it, it is connected to live from your data. And if there is any update in your live data, it will automatically show up your data in here. And there is no manual intervention needed in this between process. Through these integrations, Tableau is able to consolidate human use amounts of information in one place. This does not have any limitations on rows that you can collect to, uh, connect to millions and millions of rows from your data. Like Excel spreadsheet, we have a maximum limit for your rows, but Tableau doesn't have your, uh, any limitations to connect to your data. When you're working with the cloud data sources, this will come real handy because it can bear the load at the back end. So Tableau has wide variety of options like it provides uh, to connect into. We have Microsoft Excel, text file, access. You can even connect to your PDF file. And this has a 
lot of varieties to connect into uh, cloud data sources. Like there are so many cloud data sources available outside. We have SQL Server, Amazon, Oracle, Google, Teradata, Salesforce, SAP, and et cetera. You can easily connect by clicking it, giving the credentials, connect to the cloud server, and get the data from there. So these, uh, this is a really good uh, visualization tool out there. But why are we going to different tools then? Tableau also has its limitations. Tableau is very costly compared to the other tools. Like if the company is small and where the headcount of the company is really less, they can't afford the Tableau tools price. It will. It has this minimum number of licenses to be purchased when you are buying the viewer accesses. Tableau has developer access in it and also have viewer accesses. And if your company doesn't need developer accesses, if you want only one developer accesses, and if you want so many viewer accesses, this has a limited number out there to purchase to get those viewer accesses. And if you're working on the data sets, which are like larger, it has performance issues. But there are workarounds to actually come down with the performance issues, but it does have the performance issue when coming with the larger data sets. So what are the tools available outside in the market? We have Power BI by Microsoft. This is coming from the Microsoft company. And this is right now is the top in the, in the leading visualization tools. We have ClickSense by Click. Click is also having a Click View tool, which is into coding, but they introduced ClickSense as the visualization tool. We have MicroStrategy, Sysense, Looker, and Oracle Analytics Cloud. We do have other different tools also, but these are like the most popular ones and mostly used ones in the business. When we talk about the differences between these tools, these tools are all suitable for small, medium, and large size companies. Including Tableau, we can operate all these tools either from your desktop app or on your browser, except for Power BI which can be operated only on the browser. Like these tools are operated like an app. If you consider your cell phone mobile, you will be downloading an app and you will be using that app, right? So this Tableau or any other tools can be used like that on your desktop and also can be used on a browser. Like when you go to the Chrome, it will give you a link and you can work from there. That is from a browser. Power BI can also uh, only be operated on the browser. MicroStrategy and Power BI will cost you less when compared to all other tools. That's why Power BI is leading because it is less costlier than any other tools. ClickSense and Sysense are not compatible with iOS. Tableau is both compatible with iOS and Windows, but Sysense and ClickSense aren't. Tableau dashboards can be viewed and operated from several devices. Like if you can take your laptop, mobile, or even a tablet, you're not required to perform any other additional steps in order to make your dashboards mobile friendly. It will actually sync the uh, screen and width and height to your mobile or tablet, and it will give you a dashboard, very friendly usage, and you can operate it from anywhere. It will basically understand the device that you're viewing and report on makes adjustments accordingly. Even if you log in from a uh, from any other any other uh, mobile or tablet, it will understand the uh, view report of your uh, mobile and tablet, and it will sync the dashboards accordingly, and it will be easy to access. So, before going to how Tableau looks like and how Tableau works we will see some fundamentals in this field. Like we will talk about the data because we need to understand what is the complete process which happens in this field. Data is collected in multiple ways. It can be through manual data entry collection, apps, social media, search related data, web posts, news, blogs, surveys, documents, and published literatures, et cetera. Let's take the hot ongoing topic, COVID. Like if you go into your Google search bar, search for COVID India, you will be seeing this page. Whatever you were seeing on the slideshow, you'll be seeing this page. And you will see some graphs and charts showing how the cases are trending as per the data in the cities. This data is completely live and this is up to date. Like it is updated on a daily basis. If you check for the sources, it is written like JHU, CSSC, COVID-19 data on, on the area chart. Like, so this organization is collecting data from the different countries and storing them to predict the values you're seeing. Like, how is this process done? So, like, how is the data collected? 
we had two types of data collection. One is primary data collection and the second is secondary data collection. Primary is collecting data directly. It includes interviews, surveys, focus groups, and social medias like face-to-face -face conversations, etc. It is, it is like collecting data from the person or like from the organization. Secondary data is collecting is existing data or by the others. This includes government statistics, industry associations, trade publications, company websites, and market research. These are all come under the secondary data source collections. Now, we have seen how the data is collected. Now, we will see where the data is stored. The data is stored in the database. All this data collected, it is stored in a database. and. It is organized collection of data to access the information later. Like we will store it here and we will make the changes and we will store it and we will access it later. So we'll see about some of the data sources, databases available outside. We have SQL Server, Oracle, Teradata, Azure, SAP, Anna. These are only examples. Like we have so many uh, databases outside which are providing us some space to store our data on some, on some uh, prices. This data source is a connection to the database available on the server. Like whenever you store some data on the data on the server, it will store it there and we will have a connection to that server to pull the data into our tool and make some analysis out of it. All this stored, uh, data is connected and stored in the databases before storing the data. What we will do, we will structure the data. This structuring process or data manipulation is called normalization. The goal of normalization is to reduce and even eliminate data redundancy. That is the storing the same piece of data more than once. It is like duplicates. You don't want to store the same uh, person name or the same employee name twice, right? So to remove the duplicates, we will do normalization. This is called data redundancy. The reduction of the duplicate data leads to the increasing consistency and those more accurate data as a database stores it only one place like you will not see any duplicates in the data and it will also store some space for you because you are eliminating some rows out of it normalizing this data splits it into many different tables each table represents a separate entity of the data for example if you see this image it has information on book subject and publisher we can separate them into different respective tables. Book related columns into book table, subject related columns into subject table, and publisher related columns into publisher table. If you see this, they have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine columns. They divided three columns into each book all related into first table. Second all only contains the subject ones, and the third one will contain the publisher ones. When we are using the data, what we will do, we will connect these tables when we want some data from other table. We call them joins, and that is a deeper subject into the data architecture. We, we will actually join on some unique column name or uh, ID. We will connect the tables and join different tables, and we will use this data. This is called normalization. Normalization actually ensures the database takes up the minimal disk space, and it is memory efficient. This is all the process we will go through when we are picking up the data from some source and we will actually manipulate data, store it somewhere and store it for the historical purposes and later connect it for the analysis. So uh, going to the demo on Tableau, I want to show you a simple dashboard where we can build a simple graph out of it. And so this is how a Tableau looks like. This is the opening page of Tableau. And you can see, you can see that I, like I showed, it has so many options here. You can connect to Tableau Server. Tableau Server is basically some space provided by Tableau to the organizations. They will actually buy some space over there to project the constructed Tableaus out, of, out there and share it to other people. We have so many data sources here and we also have cloud data sources. We can connect to any of the cloud data source by simply giving the credentials. Now, I'll just go to Sample Superstore, this is an Excel sheet, which is provided by Tableau, and this is defaultly synced inside the tool to actually uh, for the easy access. I'll just click on it, and I'll get this data. This is the first page you will see when you connect Tableau to your data. This is like a working sheet, the working dashboard of yours. And these are all the data 
rows and columns coming from the data, whichever we connected into. We have like the customer table, order table, locations, products, and all these green ones are numbers. We can see uh, the text columns and also number columns separately. Now, I will just go for a simple dashboard. Uh, I'm taking category, just double clicking on it. It will actually place into rows and columns. You can, uh, you can just drag it over there or double click over there. It will align the rows and columns according to the data. I just dragged category and subcategory and I'm seeing the sales of this category and subcategory. So what I did, I just placed some of the sales to the text column and it showed me the numbers over there. Tableau also has this uh, pinned over here, show me button. It has some default graphs inbuilt into your tool. If you click on this, it will actually show it into your graph. It is like, it. I, I click, clicked on the bar graph and it completely turned your text into a bar graph. And I will switch on my labels, which shows the sales to each particular category. This is category and this is subcategory and it will show you for each category how much sales was done. And double clicking on it, I'll name it as sales. Okay, and now I'm creating one more sheet. I'll just take the same thing, category, subcategory, profit. So I'm seeing the profit for each one. And again, I'm clicking on the bar. I'm just switching on my mark labels and I will see how my each category is performing based on the sales and also the profit. If you see, there are some negative values for bookcases and tables, which is going to a reverse side of our graph. That means the axis is aligned to the positive side and also to the negative side, where you see the negative sides to the opposite side of the positive one. I'll just name it as profit. And also there is one more thing you can do. You can actually color them out. I just dragged color to the category session. It gave three colors for each category, furniture, office supplies, and technology. I'll do the same thing with sales. And I also wanted to see my discount one. And I'm dragging discount into the view. So this is the discount percentage given by each category. and I'm coloring them. So uh, Tableau Health has, is, it's like easy drag and drop tool and it is actually easy to make so many changes. If you want to change the color of each category, just have to edit the colors, color them differently. You can, you can opt for different colors. So you're giving these colors over here, it will automatically change to the entire all the sheets because this category is same for everything. It will take the same color to all the sheets. So I have three sheets now. I am naming the third one as discount. Now we have three sheets and I'm creating one more sheet based on state. See, when I double clicked on state, Tableau automatically recognize that it is a geocoding one. It will place all the, all the fields on your map. This longitude and latitude are calculated defaultly because state is coming from a geotagging. We have different types of uh, data, right? We have text type, we have numerical type, we have date type, we have geotype. And this is considered as geotype. When you just connect your data to Tableau, it will automatically allocate each field to different text, string, or date. So this is a geotagging. So this comes in a map format. So what I'll do, I'll just change my format to this. I'm putting some color to my state. So different color is assigned. I'm putting my sales. To my color because I want to see which, which uh, state performed well and which state did not perform well. So the sum of sales is into color now. This numerical value will be assigned and a color graduation is assigned to the value. 
and you can also change this. I want to see uh, red and green. So I want to see who is performing well and who is not performing well. Okay. And clicking on the second one, this we call it as dashboard. So dashboard is basically a space available to place all your sheets on the dashboard and show them neatly. So I'm just aligning them. I'm placing mat. My sales. Profit. And discount. So this color legends will automatically come up onto the tool. You can actually remove them. To place them evenly, I'm just giving them some space. So these are evenly distributed and I'm just making to the entire sheet. So this whole sheet will cover the whole space. So these are all like beautification processes to present your data neatly. I just gave them borders and I'm removing my titles like access. So it will show me the entire range. So this is how I, how I present my data and I'm showing sales, profit and discount. And if you see the data, bookcases performed well. Some of the values are not coming up, so I will allow my labels to overlap. So this values show everything over there, which is coming from the data. Tableau will automatically uh, picks up the space. Like if, if you have too many labels, it will cramp up and give some labels and not some labels. So you just have to allow it to show all the labels. So this is how it looks like when you present it. And if you see the bookcases has actually $1,14,000 sales, but it is coming in negative because it gave a discount of 21%. So in this case, it can be because it, it gave a higher discount to people and this sales are going high. But when it came up to profit, it came in negatives. This can be the case. This is how you analyze the data when, when you see this kind of uh, interactions like overlapping things, you just present it to advisor saying that, okay, see your bookcases is actually performing well, but you just gave a higher discount where it showed a negative profit because of it, like that. And Tableau can automatically keep some filters on your sheet. Like I'm using this map as my filter and I'm just seeing according to the state. I want to see how California is performing. So if you click on it, the whole dashboard changes to that because I just use this entire whole sheet as a filter to filter all my dashboard. If you unclick on it, it'll come back to normal. And if you want to see this part, it will show you that. This is basically a filter kind of, but this is called an action filter. And it is, is if you just command that to use it as a filter, Tableau will automatically create some filter over here. This we call as action filter. And action filter is basically, if you click on it, your whole dashboard changes. And I also wanted to show you how we will see uh, the top ones. We saw the uh, sales, discounts, and profit, but we want to see also see who are the, our top customers. Tableau has this uh, value. Um, I'm just taking the customer name and I'm seeing the quantity of the customer, how much they bought. And I want to see only top 10 members. What I'll do, I'll drag my customer name into my filters, select top by field quantity. Tableau will only show the top 10 of the customers. When I just drag this one, naming as top customers, and I'm dragging this sheet into my view. So these are my top 10. And when you click on it, so this is a new sheet. It doesn't, it doesn't have this action filter out of it. This is 
this is the action filter settings. I just want to see whether this is maps is filtered out to the top, to my sheet, top customers. See, this, this area has only actually Paul processes as customer. If you see the green ones, this top 10 customers will be filtered according to the state. It will give the top 10 customers, this is a, this is our action filter. And if we are putting that to the top, this California top customers will be filtered out and give you the top customers out of the state. So this, this is how you easily put some top customers or show your data into Tableau and this, if you if you can see, this is an easy drag and drop tool. The only thing you want to know is how to use it and how to logically place some values into it and how to logically write some calculations. It is more advanced than your Excel and Excel is so manual for some, some reasons, but Tableau will automatically pick up the data at the back end if you change some data in an Excel sheet. This one is connected to live as well, and this will automatically pick up that data at the back end. It will show you the current reasons. And uh, some of the projects are actually in that way where the data is automatically filled out at the back end and you want to showcase it to some other people on a live live basis. Then where the Tableau works and this whole uh, dashboard you've built can be shared by publishing them onto the server. These are the options you'll get. You just have to sign in to your server where the company actually buy some space on the Tableau server. There you will get signed into and you can sign in pub publish your workbook, the whole dashboard will be published and you can give the access to the a business advisors, whoever is using it, and they can send, see this data live. Whatever you do at the back end won't be seen by the by business advisors, but they can see the data live and take the decisions out of the data. Like if you can see here, they have to concentrate on this bookcases. Why are they giving this much discount? And if you can see the binders is performing well, even if it has, 37% discount, it has a profit out of it and the sales are going well, like that. Like these questions can be answered out of your dashboard. This is how Tableau performs. And uh, we will move on to our career options. Let's discuss the part, career path and job opportunities where Tableau is associated. Data is like, growing faster than ever. If you see the COVID dashboard, we have so much of data collected at the back end. You are filling some details in Arugya app or you are filling some details in the based on the Aadhaar card. Every data is collected and projected on some on some platform. This is how you see the trending cases. This is how you see the percentages growing day by day. And this is how you compare to the other cities, like how is your city performed. With the proliferation of the internet, we now generate even more information. Like according to the IBM survey, we are collect collecting 2.5 quintillion bytes of data created every day. However, less than 0.5% of it is ever analyzed and used. We are not we are not considering the data. We are not using it very well. Analysis this analyzing this vast amount of data is tedious and complex task. That's why companies are leveraging these BI tools to analyze their data easily and project some questions or answers or some insights to the business advisors. IDC Corporation, which is International Data Corporation, said that by 2020 the world is set to generate 50 times the amount of data compared to its previous decade. We're already doing 50%. I think we are doing more than that because of this current crisis going on and this data is not analyzed properly and companies are actually looking out for more BI analysts to analyze this and project some values out of it. The average salary of this Tableau developer can be like five, 528K annually, the highest going up to 1015K. The trend of this average salary is like rising day by day. We have so many roles for uh, Tableau developers. Some of them include business intelligence manager, business intelligence developer, business intelligence analyst, business analyst, data analyst, and Tableau consultant. I'm one of the Tableau consultant and I work, uh, I work individually. You can work in a team or you can work individually. If you have the experience to work individually, companies can still only taking from your decision, building the, uh, dashboards out of your decisions, but you need to get trained on that. 
uh, to project some questions or project some insights to the business advisors. That's why companies are adapting now to the BI skills because data is, is loading and storing at the back and there are not using the data very well. And then they are in dire need to actually build, uh, require like attract the business BI professionals and need some analysis out of it. So to conclude on our topic, um, from all the above discussed points, if you start a career in Tableau, it will be rewarding and one could see a growing trend as data and analytics field is blooming day by day, you could see yourself pointed in the right part of your career. So I advise if you have interest in this field, you can go some, you can, uh, you can learn Tableau and you can directly go into the career of Tableau.